Oh, fuck yeah. Let's see him pump something. All he needs to say is either AMC or Nokia. That's it. Literally, bro. Literally, bro. Literally. (laughs) That's all all he needs to say. He's talking about all the best. And I wanted to now. We'll see. That I'm taking all the profits that I make. Plus my original. We'll see that FSR. $500,000. And I'm going to donate to the Barstool Fund for small businesses. Um, But I really want to tell you, beyond the 500 grand um, donation or the the money that I invested, which was, you know, not a huge amount in the grand scheme of that stock or the entire market, what I learned, because I think what I learned over the last couple of days is important for everybody um, that's watching CNBC. And that is? I think that what you're seeing is um, essentially a pushback against the establishment. It's like the the market is rigged and we are pushing back. (laughs) For real. For real. And I think that you're going to see three kinds of posts. The first kind of content are a lot of people doing some incredible fundamental diligence on companies trying to think about long-term value. And in my opinion, them are doing as good and frankly a better job than a lot of hedge fund analysts that I work with. Yeah, we are. That's number one. We're doing a the way better job than those fucking analysts. Believe that, you know, coming out of I can't hear anything. What happened was Wall Street took it's too quiet. I can't make it louder. And they left retail That's why we got to shut up. And a lot of these kids were in grade school and high school when that happened. They lost their homes. Their parents lost their jobs. And they've always wondered, like, why did those folks get nailed out for taking enormous amounts of risk and nobody helped and showed up to help my family. And then the third thing is a realization that instead of having idea dinners or, you know, quiet, whispered conversations amongst hedge funds in the Hamptons, these kids have the courage to do it transparently in a forum. And I'm not saying all of it is perfect by any means, but I think it takes um, an enormous amount of faith in the system to be that transparent to talk about things and then for each individual to make their own mind up and to do things, whether it's to buy and to sell. And I think that what it proves is this retail phenomenon is here to stay. Yep. There are 2.7 million people inside of Wall Street bets. Hmm. Um, I think that they are as important as any hedge fund or collection. Here comes Facebook. We matter. The most <laughs> in the world of fuel quantitative easing. I don't know how you can run a typical hedge fund strategy and make money anymore because, for example, when you looked at GameStop, you know, a normal person would say, how can you have 136% short interest? How can you be short? Can I get someone to talk about Apple again real quick for me? We're listening to I CNBC. Think it's priced in. I think it's priced in on Apple. The Wall Street mathematician, that's the game that has been played for years, and that game came undone. Well, I mean, that may be a that that may be of an extreme example. Let let me just go through a couple of things you you said here. Um, I have a hard time believing. I mean, you suggested that there's, you know, a good amount of fundamental research going on underneath the GameStop Reddit situation. Do do you truly believe that that there's actual fundamental research? not to yeah, disparage I, in any way that the people who are actually making but these you, trades, you, but this are, seems to be momentum rather than no, a deep come, fundamental okay. analysis. Scott, there's momentum in traditional hedge funds and how they move stocks as well. But it's really disparaging if you, the starting position is these guys can't do the same quality of research as an analyst in a fund. That's just not true. I didn't say they that. All, I didn't say, I didn't say they can do that kind of research. I'm questioning whether they're actually doing the research when it comes to things like GameStop and there, AMC there, and, and some of these uh, other things? There's a distribution. And obviously at one end, there are fundamental analysts. But on the other end, there are momentum traders that follow trends. But by the way, the dirty little secret of Wall Street is that exists in hedge fund land. The reason why this GameStop trade has caused so much pain is because at the top of the pecking order was Melvin Capital. He's speaking Those guys facts. were incredible stock pickers. They are incredible fundamental modelers of companies. Okay, the, Gabe Plotkin is one of the sort of giants of our era, of my era, right? But at the end of the day, what happens is, irrespective of what he puts on, 
his trades are mimicked and copied by umpteen other hedge funds that follow along. For every LP that can't get into Melvin, they get into a copycat fund that works basically like Melvin. And so when the trade goes against him, then it goes against all these people all at the same time. So the reality is there are fundamental momentum investors in the market that are organized capital, i.e. hedge funds, and disorganized, loosely affiliated capital, i.e. Wall Street bets. And I think what you're seeing is the push and pull of that. And the realization should be that if every person was forced to publish their fundamental research, it would be hard to distinguish the best version of research from Wall Street bets bets and the best version of research from a hedge fund. They don't have an edge. And this is what you're exposing, is that that edge is gone. And now all of a sudden, you know, retail can be on the same footing and they don't have to be the bag holder to Wall Street. But, but let, me, let me ask you this. I mean, there, but, 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 but somebody from retail um, is going to eventually be the, to use your words, bag holder in this situation, are, are they not? And do you think it's, it's responsible for you and some other big names who tweeted about it yesterday and to get involved yourself, knowing that you guys are considered the Pied Pipers, that people are going to follow you into these trades. Fucking and CNBC, you won't shut up about going it. To get hurt after you and others are long gone, Chamath. Fucking it, CNBC is the one talking about it. Oh my God. Really? I mean, that's a joke. For example, let's look at Tesla. Who was right on Tesla? I'll tell you who was right. Every single retail investor. I was right. Elon Musk was right. Let me tell you who was wrong. Every single hedge fund. Name after name when it comes to innovation, when it comes to growth, when it comes to people trying to do fundamentally useful things in the world. If it doesn't fit into the mold that Wall Street wants, they try to organize against it. And there has been pushback after pushback after pushback in individual names. And this is yet another form of pushback. And all I'm trying to say is the mechanics of how Wall Street has worked. And again, I wish you would ask this detailed question. Why is it allowed for somebody running a hedge fund to basically claim that they are market neutral, but be levered up? They take a $10 billion fund and their prime brokers allow them to run $100 billion of notional, experience, uh, of notional exposure. Who thinks that that's fair? It's not fair to the retail investor. Because when that blows up and a $100 billion hole exists in a fund, which, by the way, this is exactly what happened in 2008, the government bails them out. Who is the government? All of us. So, you know, retail has been the bag holder before. Retail hasn't caused these things before. Hedge funds have caused these things before. So if you're going to talk about taking the gun away from the baby, let's make sure we figure out who the baby is. Yeah, but do, do you think that you helped fan the flames and others – like you, uh, whether it's, you know, one of the Winklevi brothers tweeting about it, Elon Musk tweeting about it, that it's, it's, it's ultimately driving this stock up well beyond what the fundamentals say that it should be. I mean, I don't think you think, and you tell me, you think, you think that GameStop is, is worth $350 a share? What I can tell you is that when I put that position on, $125,000 position, I used it to acquire knowledge and learning. And what I was trying to figure out is how these positions move in the modern trading era. And what I can tell you is, up until that point, the setup made no mathematical sense. How do you be short 140% of a company's shares? That wasn't retail. Well, Both maybe, that, maybe that's funds. a question for, for regulators, that, that maybe the whole, the, the way that that's allowed to happen needs to be be examined but I'll tell you how it's how I'll tell you how it's allowed to happen it's allowed to happen so that hedge funds can charge two and 20 to their limited partners independent of consequences I'll tell you another way that it's allowed to happen hedge funds are allowed to take their money go to a prime broker and all of a sudden get 10x multiplication on that money that's the problem you have trillions of dollars of notional being traded by these organizations you have maybe billions of dollars being traded by retail I want to get back to the issue at hand, which I don't feel like you answered the question. Th this idea of, you know, somebody's going to get hurt. You sound like you're an advocate for the, for the little guy, so to speak, right? Um, but yet by getting involved, why did you get involved in the first place? I mean, you said that to I, get yeah, information. Sorry. I mean, you wanted to make money on the trade. Come on, right? You wanted I, to make wanted money. To, to move the needle, I need to strap on hundreds of millions of dollars. 
So I wanted to learn. Why did I want to learn? When I saw that article in the Wall Street Journal, I had no idea about Melvin Capital. Yeah, dude, really. he, he has I millions. Had no idea about he Wall threw in like only 100K. Really. No he wasn't doing it for GameStop, money. Except that it had been mentioned. He could have put in way more money if he wanted here. to make money. So I tweeted out after I read the article, hey, folks, tell me an interesting trade that I can put on tomorrow for a few hundred K so I can learn, basically. That, that tweet got 10 million impressions and 13,000 comments. And when I went through there, a lot of people pointed to GameStop and pointed to Wall Street bets. And when I went in there and started to look around, what I thought is, my God, here is a dynamic about trading, about momentum, about stocks, about short interest, about gamma squeezes. These are not things that I know a lot about. And so I put in a small position to learn. And what I learned is that people can do fundamental research, come to a point of view that's diametrically opposed to organized capital, and they can be right. And I'm allowed to be on the right side of that. You know, it's not my job to go and defend a bunch of, you know, highly compensated hedge fund managers against losses. And just the fact that for one time those folks lost, we can bellyache and cry on national television, to me is a joke. Well, I mean, I don't There's think There's a that... lot of kids. Hold on a second. There's a lot of kids and a lot of people on Wall Street bets who have made money to pay off their mortgage. I read about a post yesterday of a kid that was able to pay off his entire student loans and posted it. That's amazing progress. I don't even I'm not I'm not suggesting and, and I'm not trying to come off that way that I'm suggesting what what what's happened on Wall Street bets or 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 what these this cohort of traders is doing is is wrong. It's not. I don't, I don't think that there's much of a difference from and I know it's been mentioned on this network already today. But the first thing I thought of in this situation was back to the Herbalife episode where you had a fairly sizable group of well-known hedge fund managers decide to take the other side of Bill Ackman's trade. He was, of course, short. They all went long. They, sure, they made a fundamental case in their own mind and whatever worked for them to have the conviction that they did to take that trade. Um, part of it was undoubtedly trying to hurt the short, who was Bill Ackman at, at that time. Maybe some of them did it through uh, going to an idea dinner or whatever other forum through personal phone calls or emails. And there was a large group of people just, on one side of the trade. I don't you, think it's any different. I don't think you, it's you any just, different. You just, you, you just said it's not different. You're right. Idea dinners, idea dinners, that concept has existed for decades on Wall Street where people get together in closed rooms behind closed doors and usher around names of companies and they coalesce and decide to cooperate together. The guys on Wall Street bets just do it in the public completely transparently. In my opinion, that takes a lot more courage. Because you could actually be wrong. Somebody can actually say, hey, listen, what you said made completely no sense whatsoever. Um, and so what is the difference? In my opinion, this is the modern day instantiation of that dynamic, just writ large and at scale. The only thing I'm concerned about is that there are inevitably going to be people who get hurt. Not, I'm not talking about hedge fund managers. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about the people who follow people into the trade, who think that this stock is going to continue to go up because that's what they've been conditioned to think what, in the pandemic. What should we do? Because all stocks go up, do? apparently. What, what should we do? Not allow folks. Here, here's what will happen. If you basically, if you follow your logic, then you'll say, you know what? Retail doesn't know what they're doing. I think you're wrong. Then, then the thing will be retail shouldn't be allowed to participate in the stock market. I think you're wrong. And then you know what will happen, Scott? The inequality gra gap will grow and grow and grow. Because then if you, what are they supposed to do then? Buy an ETF, a passive fund? They can't buy into hedge funds because the rules don't allow them to. So now, systematically, what you've done is you entrench poverty. No, I mean, come that that, that's taking it too far. This is just accentuating so those thoughts that, 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 that Wall Street's a casino and nothing more. That, that's what I, this I, is I, perpetuating. I don't, think so. I don't think so. I think this is an example of if you are going to so massively oversell a company to the extent that you're selling 40 more shares of that company that don't exist, and all of a sudden, other folks are like, hey, wait a minute, this is going to get squeezed and they buy it. That's just a smart trade. Retail saw it. Wall Street missed it and they paid the price. So maybe to your point, Scott, what regulators should do is say, hey, wait a minute, how can we allow companies to be 140 percent short? That doesn't make any sense. Maybe that's what should happen. You, you think this 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 overall situation is 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 fine for for the market? I'm also curious as to look. You, you I do. You have taken and I'm tired of pretending public, it's not. Um, Joker reference through SPACs uh, at a rate that that others ha have not. You're relying on the integrity of the stock market itself 
to be able to do what you do and be successful doing it. You don't think what we're witnessing now calls into question the integrity of the stock market, that a lot of different stocks with seemingly no fundamental story behind them to this degree can see their stocks rise in this magnitude and all of that is just fine? That there's nothing wrong with the integrity of the system if that is occurring? It is just fine. The, the lack of integrity in the system is the precursor that caused Wall Street GameStop doesn't have to be integrity. Sold short 136 percent, and for people since to when does Wall Street have integrity? A company in front of our eyes. That to me feels wrong. That feels pretty un-American, if you ask me. I think GameStop is a reasonable business. You know, I think what they do is reasonable. And so the fact that they shouldn't be allowed to exist because all of a sudden, like, we decide that they should be in, obliterated into the ground. Well, they, they should be allowed to exist. To they, they should be allowed to exist at whatever their stock is, should be valued at based on what their earnings are. And the stock was like free market seventeen eighteen dollars not that long ago. Who says that? Who says that? Are you, do you want to make the same argument about Tesla? It's gone 10x in a few months. You don't know what it's worth. Let's be honest. OK, you, and you don't money, you don't think that Tesla's growth prospects, Scott, I, have, I have Scott, I have my own model for the company. I'm allowed to underwrite however I want to own it. Everybody that bought that stock is also underwriting how they want to own it. And the point is, just because you're wrong doesn't mean you get to change the rules, He's just laying especially into when when you were wrong, you got bailed out the last time. That's not fair. Yeah, but doesn't mean that that these these investors who were short the stock were necessarily wrong. I mean, I still haven't heard you, I still haven't heard you tell me what the fundamental case is for GameStop at 350 or AMC theaters which are have been closed for months and months and months is is worth what the stock's uh, trading boss, at now. I went last or weekend, any number bitch. of these things, the way that they're trading. There there's no fundamental reason why they're there. They're trading because there's this momentum cohort behind it, whether it's on Reddit or Robin Hood or wherever else. But why, but Scott, why, why is that all of a sudden so wrong to you, this kind of momentum trading? Because, for example, if you look under the hood on every quant strategy, organized, quantitative, strategic hedge funds on Wall Street, those things are all momentum shops. They trade day over day, massively levered, small swings. So basically what you're saying is, hey, if retail runs a momentum play to squeeze a short, that's wrong. But hey, if Renaissance Technologies and somebody else does it, that's okay. That's what you're saying. You may not know that that's what you're saying, but that's what you're saying. And to me, that feels very unfair. No, no. What, I, what, I, what I'm saying is someone's going to get screwed, okay? Someone's going to get screwed. And it's going to be the, one of the retail, it's going to be a retail investor who gets screwed because they think that this is the way the game works that this is the new Wall Street. They're new to this game. Maybe they haven't been in the game that long. Not everybody, not trying to say that in any way, shape, or form, I but somebody's going to get away. hurt. I'm not talking about the billionaire with the big house in the Hamptons. I'm talking about the person I, who thinks this is cool, fun, and an exciting way to spend their time. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not taking away that there's an element of that, but you're really discounting how smart so many of these people are, okay? And all I would encourage you to do is spend a little time in these forums, go into the Discord server, and you're not going to hear a bunch of bros just sloshing around. You're going to hear a bunch of really, really smart people talking about things in fundamental ways. Chamath, don't tell and me so, that yesterday AMC Entertainment was was uh, you know, know a $5 stock, AMC. and Scott, today it's up 170%, just and that's just, justified. I'm, don't tell Scott, me that some of these names are justified I, to being where they are. Scott, it's one company in one moment of time. What I'm saying is you're... There's like 10 companies, sweeping. 15 companies, 20 companies. You're broadly sweeping with a broad brush that says these guys don't know what they're doing and they don't deserve to do what they are doing. And what I'm telling you is there is a small part of momentum, there is a part that's fundamental analysis, and then there's a part that's just sticking it to the man. I'm not taking you away from that. But the reality is it's all allowed in a free market. And all of a sudden, if you start to gate decisions by individual people, all you're going to do is systematically lock in institutional ways of making money for institutional clients. And I don't think that's the solution. If you want to go and address the solution, fix how risk taking happens at the institutional level, fix the precondition, fix the ability for these stocks to be so massively shorted in the first place, change the business model of funds so that they're not forced to be these small net, highly levered funds. 
change the leverage ratios. Those are all institutional decisions. But don't all of a sudden look at a short squeeze where money is being made by retail and all of a sudden say, hey, they could and may be the bag holder in the future, so let's make sure that they can never participate in the future. That's crazy. Yeah, I mean, I didn't say that. I didn't say they shouldn't be you're able to participate. You're saying that. I'm that not saying the they shouldn't be able to participate. <laughs> I'm not saying they shouldn't be able to participate. You want to say, you're saying they should participate on your terms. No. On Wall Street's terms. No. In a way where they get the, when, no. when Wall Street can have the best of it, they can maybe participate on the side. But then when Wall Street gets the worst of it, they, their parents, no. their relatives will just come and bail them out. Not what I said. They, I'm glad that's, they're participating. That, that I'm glad the they're making a lot of money. Happened. I just that think it needs pattern. to come with a warning sign. The there needs to be a that's hazard sign. All right? There needs to be a hazard sign. The hazard should be, hey, FYI, for example, why isn't there more transparency in the reporting that hedge funds have to make? Every long position, every short position, and all the leverage they're taking – every day. Why don't we do that? Then you would have a warning sign. You know why? Because people in retail would analyze that stuff so intricately and we would know where the trip wires were. Okay? The reason why GameStop happened, Scott, was not, again, because of a fundamental disagreement about valuation. It was because of portfolio construction arbitrage. Too much leverage, too much short selling, too many calls you know, or pardon me, too many put buying, all of that stuff contributed to this dynamic. That was an institutional dynamic that was created by institutional capital. So if you created transparency in reporting, that probably wouldn't have happened because a regulator would have said, hey, guys, uh, I'm not going to let you be short 140 percent of a company. That's not right. And then you know what would have happened? This squeeze would not have happened. Now, so if you want to fix it, I think you've got to go and ask for the same transparency because you can't all of a sudden have your cake and eat it too. Let's have hedge funds operate in the shadows, but let's then basically land bass Wall Street bets because they actually have the courage to write their stuff down publicly where anybody can see it. I mean, the, uh, that look, my point is that I'm not lambasting anybody, okay? I'm glad these people are making money. That, that's, the way it, that's the way it should be. That's the way Honestly, it should be. let's face it. No, no, you're not, okay? And, you know, the person that was on before you, no, she's not. And that's the issue. It's like because the rules are changing underfoot, people don't like that. Now, I'm not saying that there can't be better That's regulation, okay, and there can't be tighter rules. I get all of that. But what I am saying is that you have to be cognizant that we are moving to a world, moving to a world where normal, ordinary folks have now access to all the same information as institutional organized capital. And they will come to many of the same conclusions, sometimes at the same time, oftentimes faster, and sometimes to the opposite conclusions. And sometimes at the same time, sometimes faster. Okay. You will see more volatility like this in the future. I want to the see. Solution, hold on a second. The solution to this is more transparency on the institutional side, not less access and ability for retail. I want to see the white papers on, on all of these companies that are, that are flying and all of the deep fundamental research that suggests that all of these stocks, and there are way more than one, this is not one stock, one story. Okay? There are a lot that. Well, are judgment? fundamentally and, challenged in this environment, I'm right? I'm you, sorry, but, but how, for example, if we went back to Herbalife, were you supposed to adjudicate that and decide that one short thesis was better than one long thesis? Who are you to judge? No, that wasn't my job. Well, whose job then? A regulator's job before they can put the trade on? What are you saying? Don't come here and tell me that you're suggesting that all of these stocks are up because... They're, they're fundamentally in that place. I'm saying you and, I, you and I both know that there's a massive distribution of reasons why people buy and sell securities. There's, there's some that are purely value-oriented about backward-looking discounted cash flows. Some other people all think about future cash flows, future product innovation, future margin construction. Other people think about momentum, and that is allowed. If you look at hedge funds, there are strategies for any which way you want to play. Some folks only short companies. Some folks only go long companies. Some folks write, you know, run a totally net neutral strategy. They all exist. And I think what you're seeing is a proliferation of that kind of diverse thinking and risk taking in retail now. Because before, retail was largely known as long only. And now for the first time, you're starting to see more sophistication in retail. And I think, again, I'm just predicting the breadcrumbs here, and it could, and it could be wrong, is that over time, Retail sophistication will catch up to institutional sophistication. 
that the strategies that exist institutionally will exist on the retail side. And so my point in all of this is if you want to make the system better and healthier, force more transparency on the institutional side. Gary Gensler should get these guys to be just like what Kathy Wood does in ARC. It's so healthy for the ecosystem. What am I buying? What am I selling every day? What are my risk limits? Just make it transparent. And these kinds of dislocations may or may not happen in the future, but if it does, it'll be completely uh, transparent and you will see it coming. Right, and me, there's nothing wrong with that. Let, let me ask you this, because we've, we've, we've gone on for a while. Can you stick? Can you let me take a break and we'll come back? Stick around. Oh, yeah, sure. Stick around. Let me take a break. I'll come back. We'll have more with Chamath Palihapiti in just a oh. moment. We, of course, we'll talk about Apple looking ahead to their earnings after Unmute. the bell as well. We're back right after this. Yo, he fucking shit on me. Yo, shit on me. No, it's yeah. fucking awesome. Fuck server mute, server mute. Yeah. No. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, my. Let me get a hi -ya. Holy oh, shit. Yeah. That was amazing. Wait, what did he say? What did he say? I missed it. What did he say? That was so cool. Never seen anything like that. I'll splice Bro, that whole segment and I'll post money. the video later. I'll, I'll splice that whole segment. Yes, please, please, because I, I want to show. I want to spam that to everybody. That fucking Dude, he owned him. It felt like the moth for president. Our generation talking. Yeah, straight up yeah, Chamath for president. That was amazing. Chamath for fucking president. Nailed it, man. Oh, well, specifically Chamath for president. Definitely need some body right now. That's for damn sure. Boys. We need to throw a party for him, bro. Hey, somebody already posted up. it in the options room. The um, yeah, but the it's, video not, it's not gonna be the full Twitter. video. Oh, uh, it's not the yeah. full video. Yeah, and we're gonna watch it more, dude. This is just ridiculous, dude. He said, "Hold on, hold on, I'm not done." He said, "I'm not done." Yeah, yeah it's not done. I'm not. They're like done. trying to point the it's blame to him. Like it's like, man, TD is really it's, trying dude. to burn him. And, and yo, and, yo, thank you has, for whoever said the oh clove calls. Sorry, I got really excited and it, I got loud, but dude, I just could not hold it in. That was just beautiful. I'm, uh, I'm you know, with you there. I just Kamala wanted to. Uh, yeah. President, she this. should make Jamat the VP and then let like, oh him have Jamat the run. I'm down. That yeah, would be that an dude insane is fucking combo, amazing. Watch for, watch, for Nokia, watch for Nokia above seven. Dude, guys, no, all of them endless. are, man. All of them are guys. getting ready to pop, man. That news I is revelational. That's revelational right yeah, there. That, that literally gives right. the people the power back to do Nobody it. has ever spoken yeah. the truth like this. Yeah, Nobody that, has ever no spoken ever that articulated everyone it like that. Their yeah, pants. Yeah, exactly. yeah. And no one's ever articulated it like that. And I didn't and hear it, but someone time. someone was like, perfect oh, he time. already, the guy was like, are you, what, do, you obviously wanted to make money. And he was like, I'm already rich. Or did, said, did yeah, he say that? He would have put in way more part. money. He would have, he implied it basically. He, he called, said, I'm a, it's a learning lesson. I only put in pennies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah oh, he could have put in way more if he was make money. I saw the comment, but I didn't, I didn't, I didn't hear it, but that was funny. I do not have an inspirational. Daisy power, JP. Jesus fucking Christ. I called FSOL. We're back. All right. F O S L. Are they? We're back on. Oh, mute Server again. mute again. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Sue Herrera. Here's your CNBC News update at this hour. A Senate panel has endorsed the nomination of Pete Buttigieg to be Transportation Secretary. A confirmation vote by the full Senate could happen this week. Buttigieg would be the first openly gay person to be confirmed by the Senate for a cabinet post. Fiat Chrysler has agreed to pay a $30 million fine to settle a federal criminal probe into conduct by some former employees tied to a United Auto Workers corruption scandal. In Moscow, Russian police have searched several properties connected to opposition leader Alexei Navalny. They broke into his office and also entered an apartment where his wife is reportedly living. And in Berlin, the German parliament holding a special session to commemorate International Holocaust Remembrance Day. Holocaust survivor Charlotte Knobloch asked lawmakers to protect Germany from present-day extremists. That's the news update this hour. Halftime returns in two minutes' time.
You can unmute. Wait for it to come back. Dude, I hope they're not threatening him. I'm so scared right now. Ames, Ames my is coming back. My, is my boys, so can, can you just yeah. explain to me why you're all so excited on the, um, you know, on what the, the guy talked about before? Like, just a little breakdown for me to understand. What's we might up? not be able to tell you but by the time that thing starts, but um, okay, I, I got we it. all we'll think Mark gets manipulated and he's saying it, but John, person. can you do it? John, can you do it? Wall Street Bets is a revolution, and he's saying, like, we need to start this is the revolution like let's start it power uh, of the people taking back and how is the revolution how are we starting it just buying stocks when they're basically, we're, we're oh, destroying no. hedge funds say, so. basically saying Research. now now us retail investors are going into the books and looking at all the fundamentals realizing how short stocks like literally as he said how can a stock be shorted 140 percent of its shares and the people other guy realizing was that the other guys. all right he's people back are realizing on. that yeah and back using on. wall street uh, tactics you know, against the themselves my eye mm-hmm. yesterday was our own John Nigerian, who who I have on the show today, Thank you. who uh, at one point yesterday went short GameStop. I don't know where he is now. John, are you, are you still with me? Yes, I am, Scott. You, I'm still with you. Are you still short? And you tweeted at Chamath yesterday something to the effect of this is how it's done. <laughs> and then the stock just surged. Yeah, well, but I know you'd find this hard to believe, Scott, but that's those spreads that I put on, I put on put spreads. And the reason for that, as you know, but I'll explain it to the viewers quickly, is that you are limited in any potential loss to what you paid for the spread. So I put on hundreds of thousands of dollars of positions, just like Chamath, but I then spread it against other short positions in puts, thus creating a position where I know for sure, Scott, if the stock is above 60 by April expiration, I lose $45,000. If, on the other hand, um, some sort of uh, rationality returns and that 136% short interest comes down and the stock comes down by April, if it's between, say, 60 and $30, I'll probably make two or 300000 So it was just, it was me saying to Chamath, here's a way to put on a bet against the squeeze that's going on here. Chamath did a fabulous job buying calls, trading out of those calls, and making a nice profit. And by the way, Chamath, I also donated to the Barstool Fund this morning before we came on air, even before I heard that you did. And any of the profits I make from this trade, if it's 60 or below, all of that is going to be going to the Barstool Fund um, over with uh, Dave Portnoy and the guys. I think that that's awesome. Can I say something? I I, I just think sure. like this 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 is the exact thing that I'm talking about. I don't think that, you know, John, you did a one pager and a massive DCF. I think you're a sophisticated investor who, through a lot of experience, mm-hmm. has figured out what you're good at. And you know, in and when you saw this opportunity, your spidey senses went off, and you put yes, a sir. trade on. And it's a momentum driven trade. There is no difference, Scott, between John and to be honest with you, most of the people on Wall Street bets. Nothing. Maybe the net worth. But I'm telling you, these kids are catching up fast because they know what they're doing, too. And the reason they know what they're doing is because of companies like Google and things like the Internet that just make every piece of information available. They give you access to compute resources. You could be a kid sitting at home writing models into Google Cloud that give you the same compute power as the best hedge fund, as the best investment bank. And this is what I'm trying to get across to you guys is we are leveling the playing field. It is happening. And so there are a lot of people as compelling and as smart as John that you guys don't know about that are just behind a screen name. And I think that's okay. And I think we just have to embrace the fact that this is where we're going. Sure. I think we also need to be cognizant, though. And and I you want to see one pager, by the way. Are you going to hold John's hand and make sure that, you know, you know, before he crosses the street? Is that what you all? No, no, because John, no, no, because no, because unlike you, John didn't suggest otherwise that there were fundamentals involved. He, he didn't. Right. So I don't need a one pager. That, that, that's part of my point. That's what we need so to you be. Wanna, you, so what, am I, what are you, the free speech police now, too? I mean, come on, Scott. Like, what are you saying? <laughs> I mean, that, sa- that, that sounds funny, and I'm sure that'll play well on Twitter, but I don't know what, what, what does that mean. I mean, uh, I'm saying that, that clearly we're in a moment of time in, in the market, okay, um, where fundamentals for some stocks obviously don't matter, okay? Nobody, I don't care who they are, is going to come here and tell me that, the fundamentals are behind a lot of the moves in these stocks. They're just not, okay? 
period, end of story. They're just not. It's a moment in time. Some say they're, this can is emblematic of the. Some, I, some say this is emblematic. Hang, hang on. Some say this is emblematic of, of a bubble. Okay. Can I ask uh, you a question? I'm, I'm concerned question? about people getting hurt in what may okay, end up I, being a I part understand. of the market that's in a bubble. That, that's all. When, stock, when stocks trade down, okay, in moments of dislocation, I don't know if over the last three or four years you guys can throw up a chart, but there are, there are times where you'd see tip to tail drawdowns of, you know, 5, 10, 15% over the course of days and weeks. What, what are we supposed to do in those situations? Just stop the market so that it can't go down? No, but this is like this, can't is, this is a unique situation. Like, this is a unique situation. This is a unique. You again, admit. I mean, Scott, you're getting you're getting into trying to judge, and my point is, you can't judge, so don't try. Okay, you have to understand and believe that there is so much information out there that people can be on a level playing field, and that the most important thing we need to do now is shine the light into the corner of the market that is still opaque, and there is only one area. Companies are forced to publish every single thing about themselves transparently every quarter, okay? ETFs publish their positions every day in some cases. Retail talks about what they're doing with transparency every minute. But institutional <clears throat> capital can still hide. And so if you want to create a truly level playing field that evens these things out and minimizes volatility... Force these folks to show you what they're actually doing under the covers. And when you see that some of these funds are taking $50 billion and running it like $500 billion, I think we will all say, wait a minute, now that's the real risk in the room. Not a bunch of guys, you know, momentum trading like John's doing. Look, I, I understand. I'm glad we had this conversation. I think it's an important one to have. It's a moment in time that we're going to look back on. And this may be the story of 2021. We shall see. It's a long year and it's early. Um, last but not least, because I don't want to leave this out and uh, Kara Swisher would be mad at me if I did. Um, the governor thing. <laughs> Is that real? You really want to be the governor of California? Here's, here, here, here's what I'll say. Um, I think Gavin Newsom has done a terrible job. Um, I think that people are leaving in droves. Uh, crime is really high. Our education outcomes are the worst of any state, of any state. Our air quality is the worst of any state. And so this is a state that I think is just so absolutely incredible, but right now is being run off the rails. And to the extent that we can recall him and to the extent that my agenda, which I just tweeted out and explained, resonates with people, zero state taxes, a minimum teacher salary of 70K, school vouchers so that you have school choice, 2000 bucks for every kid born in California. I think you would see a renaissance in California that would be glorious. So that's what I'm willing to say right now. First step is we need to recall Gavin. All right. We'll, we'll leave it there to be continued. Thanks for your extended time today. I'm glad we had this conversation. Scott, can I just say one thing? I love you. Um, I be like on the right how... side of history, big boy. Be on the right side of history. <laughs> uh, I, want, I want to make sure people are on the right side of this market. That, that's all. And not, and not get hurt. Chamath, I'll talk to you soon. We'll take a quick break. We'll come right back. Fucking owned. Again. He the owned right him again, history. bro. <laughs> Jesus. Let's go. Bro. That was beautiful. Chamath for president. Chamath for president. Bro, straight up, bro. And then straight to straight president. Up. Straight up, Chamath for president. Not for governor, bro. Skip, I will skip the governor. Straight to president. Straight to president, dude. We should president, buy Chamath shares. Bro. I <laughs> I honestly don't want My him to pro. get into politics, but fuck.